Hey guys, this video will serve as my documentation for the subject Logic Circuits and Design, in which we are tasked to make our very own logic probe. First off is the schematic and the simulation. To do this, I opened up Circuit Maker. Then I created a circuit that was described by the video, so you need to put a power source. In my case, I put a battery, two LEDs, and two resistors. Just make sure that the polarities are correct for it to function as intended. Now that we're done, this will be the schematic of my logic probe. To test our logic probe, we need a test circuit. Now for the test circuit, I used the AND gate in which the output will be high when both inputs are also high. Now connect the probe tip to the circuit and let's get testing. As you can see, when the output is low, one of the LED will light up, indicating that the output in that particular part of the circuit is low. And if the output is high, in this case the logic display lights up, the other LED will also light up. Now, if you don't have a test circuit, the best thing to do is to check the voltage itself. The output will be read as high if the probe is tested in the positive line of the source, and low if it is in the negative. Here I made a simple representation of the situation, high if positive and low if negative or grounded. We will now start prototyping the logic probe in the breadboard. For this, we need connecting wires, two LEDs and resistors, and a nail cutter for stripping off the insulation of the connecting wires. First. We need to make the positive and negative power rails jump into the terminal strips of the breadboard. From here, all we have to do is follow the schematics we made in the simulation. As shown in the schematic, the tip of the probe will lie between the two resistors. So we just need to put it in the right place so we can proceed to the testing part. In testing, we need to supply it with power. So in this setup, I place the positive voltage in the bottom part of the power rail and the upper part is for the negative or the ground. As we can see, the probe functioned as intended, green if low and red if high. Now that we know that the circuit is correct, time to make the casing and solder the components. For the casing, I used a marker which I hollowed out and cut off the tip. Since the tip of the probe will be needle-like, I sawed off the tip of an unused ball pen in which I inserted a solid wire for the probe tip. I also drilled two holes for the LEDs and one on the top where the connecting wires come out. Since I know the space inside the marker is cramped, I drew the schematic in a slightly different orientation. For the next part, we will need a soldering iron and lead. To start off, I first spliced the two resistors since they are the easiest ones to solder based on the new schematic that I made. I also bended the terminals of the LED to best suit the new orientation. Now as for reference, I placed the new schematic in the bottom part of the screen. Now to solder in the LEDs. This is the part where I messed up. It was supposed to be the red LED soldered first followed by the green, and I only realized this when I was done soldering, so doing it again will do more harm than good. You know what they say, when life gives you lemons, plant them so you can have more. So let's just continue. I put a small dose of solder in the other terminal of the LED. This will be used to link the wires for the logic probe. Now to solder the other LED, bend it to the position desired for it to fit inside the casing. The next thing to do is to solder the connecting wires of the logic probe. After soldering the wires, it is now time to cram it inside a case I made which I assembled off camera. Now that each of the components are put to where they belong, now it's time to connect the probe tip with the two resistors. For this, I spliced the two of them and soldered them in place. Now for some final adjustments and the insides are now complete. Now to seal up the huge hole I made in the marker with some high quality seal and we're done. 
With some few tweaks to the probe casing, I then eventually made this as the final product for my improvised Logic Pro. It's not much, but I did my best. I wrote in the indicators since I carelessly swapped out the LEDs and hopefully this will make things easier for me. I attached some speaker wires to make it more flexible and then I attached the alligator clips in the end. Now that I have shown you my final output, let's test it out. The circuit that I made in the final testing is an inverter. So as you can see, the Logic Pro will read it as high if the LED lights up and low if it is off. And since this is an inverter, the output will only be high if the switch is turned off as it is shown in the video. So I guess it functions pretty well. This is Lord Calvin Abuliana. Thank you.